In order to address climate change, we need to create a lot of change. We need new laws and new incentives to limit the use of fossil fuels. We need new technologies to scale up. We need economies to reorient toward low carbon economies. How can our efforts, efforts which can sometimes seem so small, add up to the needed scale of change? In this video, I'm gonna talk about the power of reinforcing feedback loops to help. I'm gonna explain how reinforcing feedback loops can take small efforts and grow them to large impact. I'm gonna explain how reinforcing feedback can take a new idea and reach millions of people, or take a new solution and grow it to prominence. And I'm gonna talk about how in your own efforts, you can look for and tap into the power of reinforcing feedback. Ideas spread via a reinforcing feedback loop. And so, the number of people sharing a new idea can have the familiar exponential growth shape that is produced by reinforcing feedback loops. Fashions, fads, and the latest gadgets spread in this way, but so do important ideas about how our world works and how we fit into it. As more people are convinced by a new idea, more and more people start acting on it. The number of demonstrations, articles, and conversations about the new idea increases. More people are exposed to the idea, and some of them are convinced, increasing the number of people convinced by the new idea. This is a classic reinforcing feedback loop, where change in one direction feeds back to create more change in the same direction. Of course, your idea needs to be a good one to spread via reinforcing feedback. An idea that doesn't convince others will cause the feedback loop to lose some of its power. And the idea needs to be visible. Your demonstrations need to get noticed. A new idea that isn't shared won't launch reinforcing feedback. So now let's look at a specific example of how a new idea can be shared via reinforcing feedback. The core of this reinforcing feedback loop shows that as more residents begin biking to work, the number of bike riders visible on streets increases, which leads to an increase in the number of people interested in biking to work. As some of them try it out, the number of residents biking to work increases, and so on around the feedback loop. Other reinforcing feedbacks come into play as well. With more people biking to work, there are more people organized to improve biking, resulting in changes like more bike lanes and more drivers who are aware of bike safety. This makes biking easier for everyone and increases the chance that an interested biker will actually become someone who bikes regularly. You can probably think of many examples from your own work and your own experience where an idea spreads via reinforcing feedback. As more people become concerned about climate change, more of their friends and neighbors become concerned. That's reinforcing feedback. As some small businesses start to experiment with energy efficiency, if their competitors start doing the same experiment, that's reinforcing feedback. Anytime a small group of people trying something new or thinking differently leads to more people thinking new, thinking differently. That's reinforcing feedback. Another type of reinforcing feedback can be spurred by investment. When a group of investors invest in a new clean technology, they make it more practical, more affordable for others to make the same investment. Let's try to draw that process as a reinforcing feedback loop using the example of photovoltaic panels. If the cost of a unit of PV falls, demand for PV will go up leading to more installation of PV. As more units are installed, the engineers, manufacturers, and installers have opportunities to improve their processes, making them faster and more efficient, causing the cost of a unit of PV to fall even further, leading to even more demand for PV. It's reinforcing feedback processes like these that are driving the explosive growth in wind and solar around the world. Now, maybe you're an investor in one of these new technologies. Maybe you have solar panels on your roof. If you do, it's probably obvious to you that you're reducing your own greenhouse gas emissions, which is great. But maybe you haven't thought about the way in which you're also part of a reinforcing feedback process. Your investment, which might seem small and isolated on its own, is driving a reinforcing feedback loop, making it easier for other people to make the same investment, making it more affordable and more practical. And that's really cool, how your own investment makes it easier for someone else to do the same. That's a reinforcing feedback process. 
The final type of reinforcing feedback process we're going to talk about in this video that can help protect the Earth's climate is movement building. As the number of people who are active in a climate movement grows, the size and power of the movement grows. There are more successes and more and different ways for people to connect and participate. And both of these make participating in the movement even more attractive and more people become active. Of course, if you've ever been involved in a movement or helped to lead one, you know that it's not always this simple. Particularly as movements begin to grow in strength and power, other forces within systems can arise to push back against them. But still, the power of reinforcing feedback is always there for you to tap into in your strategy and in your change efforts. And the more you can find ways to make your efforts inviting and inclusive, the more you'll be doing just that. Now, it may be that reinforcing feedback is already a part of your strategy. If it is, it can be very helpful to draw a diagram of that feedback loop and then to ask yourself what you can do to strengthen each link in the feedback loop. Here's an example of what I mean. If you are generating success stories, how are you making sure people know about them? If people are interested in your work, how do you make sure they feel invited to join? And so on. And even if you don't now explicitly have a strategy that incorporates reinforcing feedback, it's not too late to try. To start, write down an action that you're intending to take. What result does that action lead to? And how does that result generate more power to act, more time, more partners, more resources, more ideas? Once you answer those questions, you've identified the reinforcing feedback loop that's part of your strategy. As we face huge global challenges and powerful vested interests, it's easy to feel as though our own efforts are insignificant. But the power of reinforcing feedback reminds us that small seeds can grow into huge impacts. Incorporating reinforcing feedback into your strategy is the best way I know to ensure that your efforts add up to the kind of scale and size and impact that you'd love to see.